We constantly hear from both religious leaders and governmental leaders that Islam is a religion of peace. Is it really? Our special guest today was a professor of Islamic history at Al Hazar University in Cairo, Egypt. He says that the history of Islam is a river of blood. Stay tuned. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope. I am Dave Reagan, Senior Evangelist for Lamb and Lion Ministries, and I am delighted to have with me this week a very special guest by the name of Mark Gabriel. Mark is a former professor of Islamic history at Al Hazar University in Cairo, Egypt, the world's premier Islamic university. Welcome to Texas, Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me on this program. Well, Mark, uh, is this your first visit to Texas? Uh, no, this is actually second visit to uh, to Dallas. I see. Okay. But I visit te Texas, uh, especially Houston, oh. uh, more than once. Did you know that Texans refer to Texas as God's country? <laughs> this is first time I know that. <laughs> you, you know that. <laughs> yeah. You know how t proud Texans are of Texas, huh? Amen. Okay. Folks, uh, Mark has very graciously agreed to do two interviews with us. This week we're going to focus on his remarkable personal story and what it reveals about the nature of Islam. Next week, the Lord willing, we will discuss with Mark the nature of the Quran and the contrast between Muhammad and Jesus. But before I ask Mark my first question, let me point out that he is a very gifted writer. Since he came to this country just a few years ago, he has written several bestsellers. The first one, this one, Islam and Terrorism, is really fantastic. And he has written some others. For example, he has written one, the second one was called Islam and the Jews, and the next one was called Jesus and Mohammed. This is his newest book that has just come out. Later in our program, we'll tell you how you can get a copy of Islam and Terrorism. It is must reading for anyone who wants to understand the war against terrorism in which this nation is engaged. Mark, let's begin by talking about your upbringing in Egypt. Uh, were you born and raised in Cairo? No, actually I was born uh, in the south part of Egypt, and my family was moved to Cairo when I was almost uh, 14 years old. Oh, when yes. you were 14? Yes. Okay, were your parents strict Muslims? They are. Uh, very devout. Not the secular type of Muslim that we often encounter uh, in this no, country. No, no. In fact, you had an uncle who was an imam, wasn't he? He's a clerk, yeah, Muslim clerk and uh, imam also. Wasn't he the yes. one who first began to inspire you to uh, memorize the Quran? Yes, he took me when I was five years old and he started helping me memorizing the, uh, the Quran. And is it true that by the time you were 12 years old that you had the Quran memorized? Absolutely. I spent uh, almost seven years exactly to finish memorizing the entire book. Now, uh, Mark, yes. I have a copy of the Quran that is about yes. that thick, and yes. it's in very small print. <laughs> yes. We're talking about quite a lot of material there. Exactly. The size of the Quran actually is exactly like the size of the New Testament. So you had a book, the equivalent of the New Testament in length, exactly. memorized by the time you were 12 years old. By heart, absolutely. And you yes. had it memorized in classical Arabic, right? Exactly, because the language of the Quran, it's classic Arabic. It's not dialect Arabic. It's not the, the Arabic you speak on the streets. No, absolutely and not. And probably at the age of 12 you didn't understand all that, did you? No, even, even when I finished uh, my secondary school, uh, only when I start to really, um, my uh, high school, I start to recognize the meaning of um, the verses of the Quran and the yes. teaching of the Quran. But it was a development, you see, from uh, the time I finished the Quran when I was 12 years old, Till I finished my bachelor degree, it, the, from time to time it was a development taking place in understanding the meaning of this yes. book. But when I finished my bachelor degree, I was already um, have the proper understanding of the meaning of this book. Now, why was it important for you to memorize the Quran as a child? Why, why did anybody put any importance on that? Was is that something important in Islamic society? 
Uh, this is actually, um, it came as a culture, mainly it's Islamic culture. And it wasn't just from the past 10 years or 50 years. It's from the very early time, the first century of Islam. Muslims start to take care of giving the Quran from generation to generation I see. by memorizing the book by heart. Okay. Yes. Now, were you ever exposed to any Christians while you were growing up, either missionaries or Coptic uh, Christians, uh, the, the basic Christianity of, of Egypt? Uh, absolutely. I saw um, Christians living in my neighborhood, living in my country, Egypt, as minority. But the things that uh, Christianity in Egypt uh, didn't have really the power to influence Muslims and uh, this is the reason why I wasn't influenced by this type of Christianity during all my life because the Christianity in Egypt is so tradition. Yes. M more than 90% of Egyptian Christians, they are tradition. Uh, there A is very liturgical type. Exactly. Of, yes. But there is one incident that happened when I was a little child with a Christian priest from that church. That, that, what happened in that time really was uh, left a huge influence over my spiritual life. Tell us about it. Um, I was really um, become very upset and very angry, uh, you see, um, of Christians and the Jews because of the teaching I start to receive every day in my school, especially when I was in my secondary school at Al Azhar um, Islamic Institute. Um, so one day I decide really to um, fire the Christians, and so I find a Christian priest in that church was using the road outside of my house, going from his place to his monastery every day. So every day I stand in front of my house and I start to just hit him with the, um, with the stones and with, you see. How old were you at that time? And that time I was 13 years old. And you're throwing stones at a I, Coptic absolutely. priest? Absolutely, and I injured his head. I oh. injured him in his head terribly, and they took him to the hospital. But this man, when he get out of the hospital, he just came just to find out what's going on with me, why I'm treating him that way. He came back and found you? Yes, <laughs> yes. And uh, he know my house, he know my family even. So anyway, this man, he didn't come to revenge or to treat me in the same way, but he came to advise me that there is a fire inside me, and that fire is going to burn me mm. before burning others. Wow. So, and he came to show me, or to tell me, that he forgive me. Even I injured him and I caused big injury to him. He just came to show me that he loves me, he forgive me, and he said there is no reason for you to hate me or to treat me that way. That really impressed you, didn't it? Absolutely. This is what really influenced my spiritual life even when I grow up and I become one of the best students in my university. Now you were basically sitting on top of the world as a person who was a professor of Islamic history at Al Azhar University. You were also a Muslim imam uh, at yes. uh, a mosque in Giza, right? Yes, Giza City. Uh, yes. I mean, you had all the prestige in the world, and yet one day you made a comment. Uh, I think I, I had it marked here. It's in your latest book, uh, Jesus and Muhammad. You were. You were a person who questioned things, and you were told at the university, you don't question. You were told that. Exactly. You don't question, and you kept questioning. And one day, in a conversation with colleagues, you made this statement. We say the Quran is directly from Allah, but I doubt it. I see in it the thoughts of man and not the words of God. Absolutely. And the moment those words came out of your mouth, you knew your fate was sealed, right? Absolutely. What happened that night? Um, and uh, this is... Well, uh, this is what happened in a meeting between me and other professors from the university. And uh, they just uh, met with me and they discussed um, what is going on and what they right. heard from the student. They was think that um, I, I've been under pressure of foreigner influence or um, Christian influence. or So they just want to find out why I'm doubting Islam, why I'm just... Right. So, and I said that this statement to and them... And then what happened that night? Uh, they become very upset. They kicked me out of the university. They fired me. The university fired me. And uh, in the same day, in evening time, I was kidnapped by Egyptian secret police because they accused me that I convert from Islam. We'll come back in just a moment, yes. and I want you to tell us what happened to you. 
when you were kidnapped by the uh, secret police. Folks, uh, we are going to take a brief break at this point, and when we return, we'll hear the incredible story of what happened to Mark simply because he questioned some aspects of Islam. Mark Gabriel's fascinating story about his pilgrimage from Islam to Christianity is told in detail in this book, Islam and Terrorism. It is a story so fascinating that you will not be able to put the book down. It's one of the few books that I have ever completely